distribution webinar. Our today's speaker is Katrina Pozarska from Institute of Mathematics of National Academy of Science of Ukraine from Kyiv. And he will talk about sampling recovery of functions from reproducing canal Hilbert space in the uniform norm. And please don't forget that after the talk, we have some virtual coffee time. So please, Kat. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and for inviting me to the seminar. And really, it was a nice discovery for me because uh, I looked through your archive and found a lot of interesting talks for me. So I looked these videos in YouTube and thank you for doing this. And uh, today I want to introduce for your attention uh, the results of our joint work uh, with you know, Uri from Technical University Chemnitz. And uh, maybe somebody of you have already uh, heard about these results, but uh, they, they are like uploaded. So uh, we got the reviews from our referees and uh, now the results are improved. We uh, managed to like get improved constants and uh, uh, somehow rewrite theorem. So if you compare this results on the slides and that one in the archive paper that I, uh, that uh, there is a link in your website, yes, uh, they distinguish somehow, but uh, not very like, uh, they are in the same direction, but the constants can uh, change a little bit. So this one are uh, up, upload it. So uh, let us start with the problem statement. And uh, uh, we have a function that goes from a subset of Rd to C. And uh, we know function values at some points x1 till xn. And uh, our aim is to reconstruct this function from samples. Uh, but uh, in our problem statement, um, uh, we want to and get the algorithm that will work uh, well for the whole class of functions. And uh, here the problem appears how to choose uh, points and uh, should they be equidistant or should lie on some sparse grids or maybe they can be random points as in this picture. And uh, this picture co corresponds to the points uh, that are distributed with respect to Chebyshev measure. And uh, for some classes of functions, uh, they work well. Uh, so uh, as I told you, uh, we want to uh, have a, an algorithm that will work uh, well for the class of functions. So if we take a function and draw points, uh, then we move to another function f2 and the picture remains the same. So uh, the points are distributed uh, with respect to one measure. And uh, this measure will depend uh, on the whole class. So we don't change these points uh, moving from one function to another. And this point set will be fixed. And uh, we work in the framework of reproducing internal input spaces. And we want to control uh, the worst case error. So uh, here we have a function uh, from our class. And as um, x is uh, a recovery algorithm where this m is, um, it will be introduced later. It is the amount of information about our class h of k. And we measure the norm as an error in L infinity. Uh, further, we discuss uh, the question on the power of standard information in the uniform norm and obtain uh, some recovery guarantees for concrete Sobolev type spaces. Uh, so, uh, some introduction, introductory uh, notions uh, it's uh, AN and QN, and uh, they correspond to the minimal worst case errors that could be achieved using. Uh, linear information and uh, standard information on our functions. Uh, so linear information, it, uh, it is the information which is given by an arbitrary linear continuous functionals like Fourier coefficients or wavelet coefficients or so on. And um, our h of k is a Hilbert space in our setting. Uh, if f, the charged space, is also a Hilbert space L2, then this approximation numbers coincide with singular, singular number sigma n. 
And uh, concerning static information, uh, we have here not linear functionals, but function values at some points. Uh, but uh, I should uh, like highlight that the recovery operator is also linear. So uh, we have a discrete set of points, but uh, the recovery operator will be linear. And um, surely that uh, this approximation numbers are usually less or equal than sampling numbers. And uh, here is the question appears, how good can we perform with this uh, random points and uh, uh, how well they, uh, this algorithm can approximate our function. So this AN is a benchmark and we want to get upper bounds of GN uh, in terms of this AN. Uh, surely there should be something in front. So, but how it is dependent on N or on the dimension D or on some properties of the kernel or the space uh, of functions we consider uh, so how good can we perform with our random points? And uh, what is the multiplier in front of AN? Uh, I want to highlight that we consider an infinity setting. So uh, here I see uh, Mario Urli, he considered L2 case, and uh, we now are working with L infinity. Uh, so, here uh, we introduce the norms in the space L2 and L infinity. And uh, our space is a reproduction kernel hybrid space that is uh, for each function F, uh, the following reproduction property holds. And in our L infinity setting, our kernel should be bounded to ensure a continuous embedding of our space in L infinity. Uh, if we consider L2 problem, it's um, sometimes um, sufficient to consider this um, condition for finite trace condition, uh, which ensures the continuous embedding into L2. And also um, it ensures that the singular number sigma n are square summable. So it is good in uh, several situations and going from one to infinity. And uh, now we inc incorporate some spectral properties of our embedding. So uh, we introduce uh, the sequences lambda n of eigenvalues and sigma n uh, of singular values. And also this basis functions e n and eta n uh, of the respective space h of k and L2. And uh, the systems e n and eta n are orthonormal systems in the respective spaces, but uh, they are not usually basis systems uh, because uh, this uh, mapping is not usually injective because it maps the functions from H of K uh, into the I equivalent classes. Uh, but uh, in considering this L infinity problem, we uh, do need uh, to impose some additional assumptions uh, because uh, so uh, we need that the systems E n and eta n um, be uh, orthonormal, orthonormal basis systems. And so we assume that our kernel K is a Mercer kernel. So um, it is, this kernel K is bounded and continuous and a, uh, on a compact domain. And this measure rho d uh, is a finite measure, a finite Borel measure with full support on d. Uh, then we have this absolute and uniform convergence, five. And uh, now we move to the algorithm. Uh, so uh, this least squares algorithm was introduced in this paper by David Crick and Mario Orle. And uh, I want to say that it was a really breakthrough because uh, uh, there they got a connection between sampling numbers and approximation numbers in L2. And uh, then in the paper by uh, Lutz Kemmer, Martin Ulrich, and Tony Wolfmar uh, from Chemnitz School, uh, they got a uh, worst case recovery guarantees with high probability and uh, write down the, the explicit form of constants uh, for the L2 recovery using this algorithm. And so uh, we introduce this matrix L and M. Um, 
the rows consist uh, of uh, eta, yes, at the points x1 till xn. And uh, so the overdetermined system uh, via the least squares. Uh, why the system is overdetermined? Because uh, usually we take number of samples, uh, which is number of points, uh, being bigger than m minus one. So we have the so-called oversampling and we have more uh, points than um, systems eta. And uh, usually we have logarithmic oversampling. So this n is of order m block m. Uh, but further we will move to uh, the another approach which uses um, down sampling procedure and uh, we can we will show that we can use also all of m points so we can reduce the sampling budget and uh, uh, get improved results for the l infinity problem and uh, um, sometimes this least squares algorithm is uh, enough uh, for our problem but uh, uh, sometimes we need to um, like improve it and add the additional um, function, yes, in the denominator. So uh, we solve the overdetermined systems where the matrix L consists not, not of only this eta, but eta divided by some uh, weight function rho m. And also we divide function values by, this, by the square root of rho m. And uh, this rho m is a certain weight function. I will show you on the next slides how can it look, look like. But uh, what is important that is it is fixed uh, for the whole class of functions. So um, we choose it at once and it uh, plays a good role. Uh, so uh, this weight function of the form 8 was introduced in the paper by David Crick and Mario Ulrich and uh, for L2 problems. And uh, I want to mention two more papers by Albrecht Cohen and uh, uh, Miglio Radio and also Voldemar Temlyakov. Uh, they use um, the simpler function nine, where instead of the second term, uh, we have only one half. In some situations, they uh, give equivalent result, but sometimes it really plays a role uh, which weight function to consider. And this uh, like eight, yes, this bigger function uh, gives us uh, better results. And uh, we will draw our random points with respect to this distribution, uh, rho m uh, multiplied on d rho d. And uh, um, now we uh, turn to the estimating, yes, of the error. As I told you, our k is a Mercer kernel, so ek is a basic system, and each function from our space can be written in terms of the following series. And uh, we split this norm into two terms, and we'll estimate uh, uh, one by one, the first one and the second one. So when we deal, deal with the first one, uh, it's simpler. Uh, and uh, uh, we write down the upper estimate for the first term in, um, in terms of this n of m. Uh, it is usually called uh, Christoffel of spectral function and it is widely used in literature in different uh, problems in different topics. Uh, so it's a supremum over the sum of uh, absolute value squared of eta k. And uh, I want to show you just a small like part of the proof because I found it interesting. So um, here we turn to dyadic blocks. And so our system sigma is non-increasing as a system of singular numbers. And if we consider the sigma k at the step um, which is between uh, two to the L and two to the L plus one. Then we can estimate it from above by an average of previous uh, sigma j from um, the previous dyadic block. So from two to the 
L minus one to two to the L. So because this, uh, the sequence is non-increasing, we can estimate this sigma k by this average value. And uh, then we can write uh, the upper bound in terms of our Christoffel function. And uh, when we move to the second term, this projection minus uh, recovery operator, it is much harder. So uh, now we put this operator outside because uh, the operator of projection uh, is uh, the projection as well. And uh, uh, now we need to estimate uh, the coefficients of our approximate. Uh, but the coefficients are not uh, just for function f, but for uh, f minus projection. And uh, we split it into two parts also. So first we estimate uh, the spectral norm of our Murray Penrose inverse. And here we can use the result by uh, Nagel, Schaeffer, and Urli. Uh, namely, they proved uh, like two-sided bound. And uh, for this um, first approach, it is enough to um, have only this upper bound and put here seven. Uh, but uh, when we move to down sampling procedure, uh, then we use also um, like lower bound, the two-sided bound. And here we have two over three n, and we need here 10. So I just wrote it in general uh, with 10. And uh, um, now you will see why we do need this weight function. So uh, in our, um, our n of m, our Christoffel functions, uh, was defined by supremum over the sum of eta without any rule. But uh, for our weighted list squares, we have additionally this uh, row m in the denominator. And if you look to the weight function and use only the first part of this function, uh, then we see that our n uh, tilde is less or equal than uh, 2 multiplied on m minus 1. And uh, that, that is that the Christoffel function has a similar behavior as for good functions like uh, uh, L-infinity bounded systems. So if our system is unif uh, uniformly um, bounded, yes, by some constant, then the Christoffel function behaves like M minus one multiplied on some constant. And here we have the same behavior for uh, arbitrary orthonormal systems, not um, usually like, bounded by some constant. And uh, the second uh, part, uh, so we have here the theorem by uh, Moritz uh, Muller and Tino Ullich uh, for infinite um, matrices, yes. So this yj is an in L2. And why do we need this? So I will show you. Um, we have estimated the spectral norm and it remains to estimate the norm of G where G is a F minus projection. And if we write it in terms of series, yes, the, um, the series will begin with um, M's number because we have M minus projection. So we have here uh, YG, yes, uh, they are infinite vectors um, and uh, the components begin with uh, AM uh, term. So, we want to use this theorem. And uh, uh, for this reason, we need uh, our yj to be bounded by some constant. And uh, the cho choice of our weight function, namely the second term, this one, will help us to do this because uh, uh, we put, uh, instead of this row and the second term, yes, and have the sum of a sing singular number squared. And the sum is finite uh, under the finite choice condition of the kernel and also under the condition that our kernel is bounded. So uh, all the conditions of this uh, theorem fulfill and we can use it to estimate this um, norm of our G. And uh, just to say that uh, this results in, uh, this result, the theorem improves uh, on previous results by uh, Tro, Prahut, Pager, uh, Mendelssohn, Oliveira, and other uh, for 
in finite uh, random matrices. Uh, so, and now I move to our main result, and uh, you see that like, we have this uh, reproducing kernel hybrid space H of K uh, with continuous and bounded kernel. Uh, and row D is a finite Borel measure with full support. Uh, we rearrange our singular values in the non-increasing order and uh, uh, we have uh, logarithmic oversampling. So the minimal uh, worst case error uh, can be written in the following form. And from this form, it is not visible how good is this uh, operator. So uh, what is, uh, how can we, Compare this estimate, yes, with this an. Uh, but uh, further, you will see that uh, it's uh, good enough. Uh, so it is close to the approximation uh, by uh, linear information. Uh, so we managed also to write down explicit form or explicit uh, values of our constants and. Uh, for an arbitrary orthonormal system, we have this 20 and 122. So in this archive, archive paper, uh, they differ slightly, but uh, here you see the improved constants. And um, for arbitrary orthonormal system, we have this, that this n of m tilde, this Christoffel function, behaves like 2m minus 1. So we have 20 here, and uh, for uniformly an infinity uh, bounded by one, we have uh, without two. We have just n minus one, so we have 10. And uh, respectively, we can write down the C3 for both cases. And uh, if uh, our system is good, uh, in sense that our Christoffel functions behave like K, uh, then, uh, we can write the upper bound in terms of this approximation numbers. Uh, in L infinity, here we use the result by uh, Kobe Skun and Siken, uh, and uh, they got the estimate of sing singular numbers in, in terms of uh, approximation numbers. And so here you have that it is greater or equal than uh, GN sampling numbers, and here we have A approximation numbers. So now we compare the results for uh, different weight functions. Uh, the first one was uh, introduced, yes, and uh, you saw the proof, but similarly, you can deal with a um, simpler function where we have one half instead of this uh, big second term. And um, after changing some um, proof moments, we will get here additional n of 4k uh, under the sum. So if our n of k behaves like k, it doesn't make really a difference. But uh, if it behaves like k squared, it uh, causes some difficulties and uh, the estimate uh, will um, distinguish uh, even in, uh, main, in the main order. I will show you the example for uh, the genre polynomials and we have the difference uh, even in a uh, main read. And one can also use a non-weighted least squares algorithm that is without introdu introducing this um, weight function or M. But uh, here we need to compare not M and M, but this Christoffel function with a number of samples. And we get the following result, 50. Uh, so now I move to the another approach. And uh, it is the downsampling procedure. Uh, I looked to the presentation of uh, Mario Ulrich, and uh, he talked uh, at this seminar in May, and he mentioned this um, approach. So just a few words about uh, this approach to uh, for you to remind what is uh, what does it mean so we have this matrix and uh, uh, we have uh, m log m samples so we have um, the so-called logarithmic oversampling 
But uh, we now want to reduce sampling budget and uh, uh, to reduce the number of samples uh, to become like O of M without this additional logarithm. And here we can use a, a viewer subsampling strategy. And it was um, the cel celebrating proof of viewer's conjecture uh, in the paper by Nitin Olevsky Ulyanovsky of 2016. And uh, um, I should mention also the paper by uh, Markus Spielmann Shivaslava of 2015, where they um, got some previous results, um, which were the base for this paper of uh, Nitsan Olevsky Ulyanovsky. And uh, if you're interested in this topic, I ju just show you. Uh, it is the presentation by Tina Urni here. It was uh, the sampling recovery workshop in May. And um, in this presentation, uh, he talked about this problem in a lot and about uh, the uh, connection of Cadison Singer problem with um, our reverse conjecture. So uh, if somebody is interested, I can uh, send you the slides. Uh, for the more, more detailed information on this program. And uh, uh, just to mention that uh, um, Irina Limonova and Voldemar Tamilikov also use this approach for uh, Martinkevich time discretization and uh, got uh, also some results in this direction. So uh, this approach is based on the following theorem. So if we have a, a frame, uh, we can uh, choose a subframe, so we can reduce a number of um, elements of this frame and uh, take O of M of them. And this frame will remain um, also good. And uh, these constants are from the paper by Nege Schaeffer Ulrich, so um, they uh, calculated them precisely, and uh, we can use this result for our reason. And uh, so here you see uh, the first estimate corresponds to this logarithmic oversampling uh, with uh, weight function rho m. And the second approach corresponds to this weaver's downsampling procedure, and we have here O of M samples. So we don't have here logarithmic oversampling, but we have here um, an additional log. But uh, it's not a big deal, so it helps us in several situations. And uh, uh, so just to show you if our system is uh, good enough, so this Christoffel function behaves like K, uh, this N of M and M cancel, yes, inside the sum and outside it, and we get the estimate 16, uh, it's sampling numbers in terms of approximation numbers. And um, everything is in L infinity. So we have the identity operator from H of K to L infinity, and here the same. Uh, that is um, this L infinity problem. Uh, for this L infinity problem, um, random points are almost as good as um, linear information. Uh, so we have a gap at most uh, square logarithm of M. And uh, so it doesn't depend on the dimension D. It doesn't uh, grow with the, with the dimension. It's just square root of logarithm. And uh, so this gap is uh, small enough. And uh, now we turn to uh, the, uh, another topic. It's uh, power of standard information. Um, so we have here Q linear and Q standard. Uh, this notation were taken from the book by Nova Kovarzhnikovsky. Uh, so we find the supremum over Q such that this limit for approximation numbers for linear information um, tends to zero and uh, for standard information, that is uh, for sampling numbers. And uh, I introduce the following assumptions, one and two. And as this u and pi are optimal in the sense that uh, u is the infinitum over all u that the first condition holds and uh, pi is the supremum over pi uh, for which the condition two holds. 
And uh, similar conditions were imposed in the papers by Kova, Sivkovsky, Wozniakovsky. Uh, in the first mentioned paper, they uh, consider um, linear, appro linear approximation, yes. Uh, and uh, in the second paper, they uh, uh, consider standard information. Uh, so, uh, but instead of the condition one, uh, they introduce a one uh, prime. So um, just um, boundness of our system uh, eta g. Uh, surely that if you have the boundness here, uh, then the spectral function n of k behaves like k. And we have um, a partial case of uh, the condition one. So this one, one and two are more general. And uh, if the condition two holds, yes, our uh, singular numbers behaves like j to the pi, uh, then the power of linear information equals pi. Uh, it's straightforward. So if a n behaves like n to the minus pi, yes, then q equals pi. It follows from the definition of the power of information. And uh, if uh, the condition one prime and two, uh, so here we need this Christoffel function, uh, then when we move from um, L infinity case, uh, from L2 case, yes, to L infinity case, we um, lose one half in the optimal order. It was shown in uh, the first paper by Kuhl, Vasilikovsky, and Wozniakovsky. Uh, when we move to standard information, uh, the following result was proved uh, in the second paper uh, by Kuhl, Vasilikovsky, Wozniakovsky. So uh, they got the bound for this power of standard information in the uniform norm. And uh, you see that this upper bound is uh, the same as uh, for, the, for the linear information. So it cannot be improved. We lose this one half even for linear information. Uh, but uh, as to the lower, lower bound, um, it was not uh, known up to today if uh, we can reduce this bound. Uh, so uh, using our theorem, we show that uh, under the conditions one and two, yes, this is more general one, and uh, the second condition, uh, the power of standard information in the uniform norm, is at least pi minus u over two. Uh, and in the partial case, so uh, if you have here uh, n of k of order k, uh, then the power of standard information uh, in the uniform norm equals pi minus one half. So we don't need this lower bound and uh, we show that uh, standard information is almost as powerful as linear information. In this case, if we uh, don't uh, take into, uh, into account logarithms, so uh, if we talk only about um, the polynomial order. And uh, now we move to some concrete examples. Uh, so we introduce a reproducing kernel hybrid spaces of the following form. Uh, CK is uh, Fourier coefficients with respect to trigonometric system, and W of K are certain weights. Uh, so in this paper by Kobas, Kuhn, and Sikel, it was shown that um, this condition of on our weights uh, ensure a continuous embedding of uh, our space into L infinity, and also they proved for uh, Wiener al algebra norm and uh, uh, for L infinity. Uh, so this condition, um, we need this condition for compact embeddings. And uh, if you look at this space uh, from the point of view of reproducing kernel header space, then our kernel takes the form 18. And um, for the spaces, we have the following result for sampling numbers. And uh, I want to mention that uh, for in the general case, yes, for um, reproducing kernel hybrid spaces, not of the special form, but uh, like in general, we have that this approximation numbers are less or equal than uh, the sum of uh, rearrangements of um, singular numbers. Uh, but in the special case, we have the, the equality. It, it, it was also proved in this paper by Kobus, Kuhn, and Sikke. 
And uh, um, for these classes, uh, we also have this um, logarithmic gap, like square root of logarithm. And uh, to mention uh, previous papers, uh, it was recently um, obtained by Louis Kammermer and also uh, in their previous paper um, with Tony Waldman, that then for sampling numbers they estimate 19 holes. So they have here additional log and also A not N, yes, but M over log M. Uh, so we showed that uh, this estimate could, uh, could be better. And uh, in their uh, investigation, they used uh, rank one lattices. And here we use random points. So random points can beat um, some lattices. And now we uh, like move to some more concrete examples. If here we had uh, this weight function W, yes, of the general form. And now we will choose it uh, uh, like in, in a more specific way. Uh, so the first case uh, we have here the product um, over this one plus absolute value of kgs. And um, in the second case, we have the so-called plus norm. We have this S2 uh, inside the bracket and as outside, outside the bracket. Uh, so these classes are um, equivalent uh, up to the constants. It could depend on the dimension and on some other parameters. Um, so from a point of view of asymptotic estimates, they are uh, equivalent. And um, this estimate for uh, Kolmogorov width of sampling numbers was uh, um, obtained long ago. It was Mityagin and uh, Babenko. It was uh, 1960s. Uh, and uh, they got the bound for uh, Kolmogorov width. And um, so if we talk about asymptotics um, and um, we don't uh, track this um, D dependence and the dependence on the smoothness parameter R, uh, S, um, then we can use this asymptotic result. And uh, for both classes, we get the estimate 20. It's with high probability for these random points. And if we use the reverse down sampling procedure, uh, then we don't have this oversampling and uh, get additional square root of log. And uh, it can seem that uh, this Estimate 22 is worse than 21, but uh, see that uh, here we have M and here we have M log M. Uh, so M is of order N over log N. And actually the estimate 24 uh, is better than 21 for sufficiently smooth classes, uh, that is for as uh, bigger than one. And uh, we know the estimate for sparse grids for these classes. And uh, it, it is by Tamilakov and it is slightly better. So we don't have one half of sparse grids. Uh, but uh, now we move to pre-asymptotic estimates. And um, we don't know pre-asymptotic estimates for sparse grids in this case. And here you have explicit form of the constants. And uh, um, why do uh, why it is important? Uh, so if we look at this uh, function, yes, so on the right hand side, uh, its behavior is like like this. So it grows uh, up to e to the d minus one, and then then it starts decreasing, but uh, we need to wait uh, exponentially long until that this um, function yes, that will take values less than one. We have here, here uh, four to the d, I think. So we will need to wait exponentially long until this uh, value is small. And uh, here we have pre-asymptotic estimates with explicit constants. So for small n, uh, for so-called pre-asymptotics, uh, it could be better. And um, from the pre-asymptotic point of view, uh, this class is distinguished. So 
Uh, I told you that they are equivalent from asymptotic point of view, uh, but uh, for pre asymptotes, we, we get different constants. So this first, first result refers to the sharp norm, and we can write down similar results for this plus norm. And um, the pre asymptotic estimates for sing singular number sigma n uh, were uh, obtained by Thomas Kuhn. Um, earlier, they were established in this paper by Kuhn-Sickel uh, only, but not for all n. And uh, further, Thomas Kuhn um, improved this uh, estimate for all n. So we were able to use this estimate. And, uh, and also for this plus norm, we can use uh, the recent paper by uh, Kuhn-Sickel Urlich in the Journal of Complexity. And uh, uh, one more example. Uh, so uh, here we uh, have our general results one more time. And um, now we move to the univariate example where our Christoffel functions behave not like M as in the previous case, but like M squared. Uh, so here I want to mention the um, book by Nevai, uh, where um, they gathered the information about this Christoffel functions for uh, the set of trigonometric polynomials um, for different uh, Jacobi weights parameter. And for this Legendre polynomials, uh, alpha equal beta equal zero in Jacobi weight. And uh, we have such behavior uh, for Christoffel function. So we, this n of m and m doesn't cancel in, in this situation. And uh, we have uh, like changing <laughs> under the sum. Uh, so we got the estimate 25 for sampling numbers. And um, just to mention previous results, uh, it's for Gauss points and for um, random points in L2. Uh, so for uh, Gauss points, there was a result by Bernardini and Mete. Uh, they showed that um, Gauss, uh, using Gauss points, one can get uh, n to the minus n multiplied on log n, I think, squared. Uh, and uh, this estimate was uh, optimal in the main order, but um, this power of logarithm was not optimal. And in this recent paper by uh, Kammermer, Urlich, and Wolfmer, they showed that using rand random points, also in L2 setting, uh, one can get here not log to square, yes, but square root of log. So using random points, one can improve estimates for L2 approximation. But uh, we are not aware on the ex existing bounds uh, for any like sparse grid, uh, Gauss points in literature for L infinity settings. So we cannot compare our results with something else. But here we have results for sampling numbers in L infinity. And uh, just to compare, so in the previous uh, examples, um, there was not a difference between uh, this weight function rho m and rho m prime. Because um, if n of m is of order m, um, everything is fine. But in this example, we have that uh, n of m behaves like, like m squared. And here we have a difference. So if we consider this big weight function, yes, that um, our worst case error, I have this here n to the minus s plus 1 in the main order. And if we move to the simpler weight function, where we have one half instead of this uh, big second term, uh, then we have not like plus one, but plus three over two, which is worse. And uh, uh, the last one um, corresponds to this non-weighted situation, where we need to uh, compare not m and n, but n of m and uh, and so uh, even this not non-weighted uh, least squares uh, 
Sometimes for small s, for s between one and two, uh, gives better results uh, than 27 with this um, rho m prime, but it, it is never better uh, than this estimate 26. And uh, just to finish, uh, here you see the realizations of random nodes and uh, these pictures were made by Tony Waltner. So you see that uh, these random points behave well. And I think that it's all for today. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Yeah, let's, let's listen to the speaker and, and please some questions or comments or remarks. So I have a, I have a question. Can we just go to the previous slide for a second? Yeah, sure. So, okay, so can you explain what's going on here? Uh, what's going on here? Uh, so you have here this lines with triangles, yes, and they correspond to the approximation uh, using random points, this GN. And uh, they almost coincide with this, uh, like, th this one, this line, yes, uh, which corresponds to approximation by um, some linear information. Uh, that is, I will turn to the beginning. So I started with these two definitions. So uh, the first one uh, is a um, minimal worst case error that can be achieved using linear um, information. Yes, some um, uh, linear continuous functionals. And a uh, second approach uh, is um, with, with respect to uh, random points. And uh, in that picture, we compare this uh, like estimates of two approaches, yes, and we see that uh, uh, this an and gn behave almost the same. We see that they almost coincide. Yeah, so, so this is uh, sampling uniform points, uniformly distributed points in the cube, yes. is that right? Yes, yes, yes. But here we have the test function from some non-periodic function space. So we have um, some results that they are not finished. I can show you uh, the idea. So we considered um, another Hilbert space based on Chebyshev kernel. So uh, we considered here Chebyshev measure and um, uh, these points were distributed with respect to this Chebyshev measure and uh, took uh, for this example, yes, we took this uh, function from our space based on Chebyshev polynomials, so like a special one. But uh, we can draw like these pictures for periodic functions and the picture will, will remain almost the same. I mean, if you compare approximation numbers and sampling numbers. You mean for a different uh, set of orthogonal, uh, for different orthogonal bases? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, yes. Okay. So, okay, so uh, thanks. So this is, uh, I have another silly question, which is slightly off topic, probably. Um, okay. So, so can you do something? So, so in this case, you looked at functions which have uh, values in, complex numbers. So how important is it that you have a field? Um, could you do something similar for vector valued functions? Uh, for vector right, you have, so you have inner product, maybe is that enough? Okay, <laughs> uh, really we haven't considered this like up to now, but maybe one can deal with this. Thank you. Like, So you mean that they're not complex value, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, thank you very much for this idea. So maybe maybe look at this. 
Yeah, this, this is just something that came, came up, mm -hmm. came up, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just thought, if, if maybe you see an immediate obstacle, so maybe if there are no immediate obstacles, there are maybe further obstacles, obviously, but still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't thought about that, sorry, I don't have. No, not at all, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have a question. Can you go mm -hmm. to slide? I'm not quite sure. Twenty or twenty-one or two or something. Yeah, sure. That's maybe may, may an easy thing. I don't, don't get here or one further. Twenty-one maybe. This one. Uh, oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now one. One. One more, please. Can one more slide? So twenty-two or just a, yeah, this one. Can you explain why you have the maxima in the first lines, but as a corollary you get a minima? Then is it is it easy to see or is it? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, if you have this n of k of order k, this cancel yes, and um, we have here just the sum um, of singular numbers. Um, first one begins with uh, m over two, and the second uh, by m over four. So we can take maximum, yes, just this one. And here we have uh, the same sum, which begins with m, so um, it is bigger. Uh, uh, sorry, it, it is less than uh, this one. And here we have uh, this log and sum. Uh, so we gather these two estimates and um, like take the minimum over uh, the first one, yes. Here we have so both both estimates hold right, and you just yeah, pick yes, the yes. the good one. Mm -hmm. we, we just like uh, gather them in one estimate yeah, okay. and take uh, the best possible. So um, it's uh, this uh, second yes um, corresponds to the uh, reverse downsampling procedure, and the first one corresponds to this uh, logarithmic oversampling. So we just gather it and. Uh, if this reverse uh, procedure gives better results, sure. so we can take it and... Great. Thanks. Um, please, some other questions or comments? Um, I have also some small question, mm -hmm. maybe. As you talk about weight function, uh, and you told that the most the complicated function uh, you is better than uh, the function weight function mm -hmm. with one half. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the uh, most complicated function is it always better, or uh, is it some cases where the simpler function could be better as well? Or? Mm -hmm. The simpler is. Never better in the situations that we considered, but uh, it, it is better, it is only better for cal calculations, right? Yes. yes, yes, it's better for cal calculations. Uh, I mean, uh, if this n of m is of order m, yes, uh, we can take a simpler function because it is easier to cope with it, and um, mm -hmm. so the results will distinguish in some constants, but uh, not uh, in order. Mm -hmm. Not too much. Like, uh, Not too much, yes, yes. But okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, and for uh, non Hilbert spaces, uh, uh, I know of some papers by uh, Jan Urlich and uh, his team. So they <laughs> used uh, more complicated even as this eight. So um, instead of the second term, they use a more complicated form for non Hilbert spaces. And, so this eight is not like the most complicated. <laughs> Thank you. Um, please, some other questions or comments. Okay, if it's not the case, let us thank you, speaker, again. Thank you very much for a nice talk. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here.